everybody. This is another edition of Book Talk, and for this edition, we are talking about a uh, a book called Barrio Writers, and this is put out through El Centro Cultural in um, in Santa Ana, and it's a collection of writings by uh, teens students uh, from Santa Ana and. Kind of with the view toward, as it suggests in the title, uh, empowering teens through creative writing. But uh, first, let me introduce my my guests. Uh, so, uh, as always, we have Michael Magoski, and uh, a new guest is our Ricardo uh, Gonzalez. What does a book like this mean? What's it trying to do? Uh, well, this is very deep, and and the reason is because of. Um, the importance of it in terms of helping the youth become writers and becoming part of a very, very, very important tradition. Thinking of links back to people like Alorista, Juan Felipe Herrera, uh, Louis the Foot of the Royal Chicano Air Force, uh, a tradition of great writers coming out of the barrios. The beauty of this is that it finds genius in the barrio and helps these new writers on that path to becoming something profound and something that all of us can share in the future. Yeah. So this is a poem called I Still Have a Dream and is written by an undocumented student who went to UCI and still had to drop because of the struggles that come with being an undocumented student in America. He's not a criminal. He's not any of the stereotypes. He's a smart dude trying to get an education and find his dream. And he wrote this poem called, I Still Have a Dream. This is a letter to the president. This is a letter to the king. Martin Malcolm Obama, I still have a dream. This is a letter to the president. This is a letter to the king. Martin Malcolm Obama, I still have a dream. Dream of a pregnant woman walking north through the desert, the same dream of a southern slave with snapped shackles guided by the crescent, the dream of being free in a better life, the dream of ending a painful strife, twice pursuing the American dream, twice running from America's nightmare. Mr. President, I still have a dream. All I want is to live in peace, but as a child I grew up being told that people like me were either criminals or thieves. We stabilized the sector of agriculture, but they paint us as the enemy came home and cried and asked, Mama, why is it that things are this way? Some of us joined the army. We are bleeding to stay. That's when I close my eyes and I see my mother's face because she risked her life for me to see some better days. I'm just asking for my basic human rights to freedom and education, the right to live in peace and contribute to this nation. Because how can we raise a family knowing any day we can get deported? Mr. President, this is part of the story that is never reported. and In the media, it is often distorted. Mr. President, we are more than cheap labor. We work for this. We're not asking for a free favor. We are students, workers, and soldiers. We are doctors, teachers, and lawyers. I have a dream of being a good author. I still have a dream of one day being a good father. Mr. President, I am a human being, not an alien or illegal. I want to be a teacher, or probably a better historian, so I can write down and tell the border stories of so many wooden crosses, symbolic of corpses, that once had a dream, but their dreams ended right there. I'm sick of living in this nightmare. Because, Mr. President, when I think of Dr. King, I picture him writing you a letter saying, I still have a dream. Because, Mr. President, when I think of Dr. King, I picture him writing you a letter saying, I still have a dream. Okay, so that was a poem by the poet known, known as Elohim called, I Still Have a Dream. Ricardo, what do you think? Yeah, that was awesome. And, you know, this is uh, his own I've Got a Dream poem. And I think that was fantastic because it shows two things. A, they keep trying to put out the dream, and B, they're not going to do it. The dream continues. And I think this poem is a good example of keeping it alive and keeping that resistance going. I, I thought it was very, very inspirational. The, the title references the Martin Luther King famous I Have a Dream uh -huh. speech. Do you think the Latinos don't have the same dream? Of course they do. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah. Well, and, and, and who's the speaker for the Latinos? Is it Martin Luther King? No, no. there were many. Um, well, there was Rodolfo Corpio Gonzalez. He wrote the uh, the famous poem, I Am Joaquin.
Why yeah. isn't there a holiday for these people? Why do we have a Martin Luther King Day, but we don't have one for the Latinos? Well, we have one for Cesar Chavez, but as you know, we have to fight for these things just like we have to fight for Martin Luther King Day. I think these things uh, go way, way back into history. We pay for the crimes of our ancestors, basically. Like, sins you know, of our fathers. The sins of our fathers. Right. You know, like, I mean, yeah. there's a history, even here in Orange County, in Fullerton, that goes all the way back you know, to the citrus towns. You know. Mexican Americans were, you know, socially segregated, housing segregation, school segregation. The first school desegregation case in America was not Brown versus Board of Education, it was Mendez versus Westminster, which was about seven years earlier. <laughs> And not a lot, why don't people know about that now? Here's, here's my thought. Here's what I think. I was watching a movie. It's called Bobby. You know the movie Bobby? Mm -hmm. It's about the assassination of Bobby Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And it takes, it's a, a drama, and it takes place in the Ambassador Hotel in L.A. And it's very interesting because it's 1968, and all of the help in the hotel, it's like leading up to right. the night when he's going to be assassinated. And Bobby Kennedy, he was very supportive of Cesar Chavez. Right. He was very supportive of sort of the... Uh, the Chicano movement, which was, you know, really getting steam in the 60s. He was assassinated that night in L.A., and the, the film dramatizes, a lot of the characters are like the kitchen workers, like the bussers right, right. and the cooks and stuff, and they're all, except for the head cook, who's African American, but all the workers are Latino, and... One of the cooks says to another one of the cooks something to the effect of, we are the new Negroes. Yeah. In America. Hmm. So, as it says in the poem, as the writer says, he says, I want to be an author, and he says, I want to be a better historian. And yeah. I think that what this world needs right now, as much as anything, is a, is, a, is a good historian who can tell the truth and dive into the past and be like, hey, this right. is the complex, ugly reality. Right. There's not like institutional support for a project like Barrio Writers. This was like people volunteering their time in this cultural so, center. So people need to understand that, you know, that, that inadvertently they're supporting the status quo. They're supporting the way that things always are by doing nothing that the only way to make change is to actually support small projects like this. Yeah, right. And El Centro Cultural, I think they recently relocated, but they have a lot of amazing projects. So there's mm -hmm. the Cartonera project. Right. You want to say something about that? Like, what was that? What's yeah, that? they're fantastic. The Cartonera project out of Santa Ana um, help uh, young kids, teenagers, uh, produce books out of carton, which is basically carton, right? Cardboard. <laughs> It's not only uh, a, it's a literacy project, basically. It's also very empowering because you learn you can do art on your own out of any kind of resource. You uh, have community input. You share in a creative group. And uh, they had a fantastic show here last month where they help people produce books. And uh, their turnout was very, very great. A very, very powerful and important project. Yeah. yeah. And we're hoping to have a show with them at Hibbleton um, continuing because it's not, I don't know, with projects like these, it's not like you do one thing, you do one show, yeah. and then you're successful. It's like it continues, it continues, it continues, and it takes people constantly being uh, supportive of, the, of these things. Right. So we're hoping, you know, if that show was at Paz Gallery or Neighbor, and we're hoping uh, this next year to do a show at Hibbleton to kind of continue that project. <laughs> Words 
can be our toys or tools that we've picked up from the streets, people, books, or schools, and choose to use them to make news or fuse them with music simply for our own amusement. It's a movement. And so the sun sets and your eyes see the pain and sweat through a silhouette that represents the women and men, the workforce that goes forth and knows no remorse with will and hope as the inner source. And all of those folks that are told are worth nothing at all and have their souls pinned to a wall then thrown into a pit of fire so they can't rise any higher, expected to expire, unaware that they could have a young child's mind inspired to pick up a weapon, a spray can, permanent marker, pencil or pen and begin to see ways to win commerce using common sense and judgment to write and or fight for whatever they believe is all right to take flight and ignite to set a bright light and open the world's eyes to the sights where evil cowards high in towers with their field of flowers where they shower with the luxury that they devour per hour at our expense and expose them. Forget your fortune. Forget your sorrow. Forget today, forget tomorrow, forget your name and who you are. Release your love, release your hate, release your worries, end your fate, release your stress upon your chest and give rest to all the tests. Express your feelings with extremity. Forget your fortune, forget your sorrow, forget yesterday, the time you borrowed. Forget your name and who you are. Forget it all, forget it now. Escape. That reminded, Michael, that reminded me of kind of even your own writing. You shared with me some of your own things you've written, like that combination where you'll switch between fiction and poetry, like mm -hmm. seamlessly. It did. I think that's what yeah. was, that's kind of what drew it, drew me to it a little bit. Yeah. It, it, it kind of blows my mind that somebody that's so young can, can write uh, so articulately. 24. 24 years old and, and um, I mean, it's not just the, the manner and the juxtaposition of the words and, and everything, but, but there's a, the, but there's a sense of, um, life history in that piece, you know, that comes with somebody who's lived life. I think, I think it's especially um, moving that somebody, you know, was willing to share this with an audience of people who may or may not understand or may not know, you know, just to kind of throw it out there. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, some of the ideas, especially of this piece, are, I think, way beyond what most people are even capable of, of, <laughs> of understanding. One of the things that I like about art and writing, the thing that connects me to certain kinds of art and writing, is the beauty that comes out of struggle. Mm -hmm. I see that in that poem. So it teaches us to, uh, to respect the wisdom of youth, which usually would never do that. But this writing by all the authors show that, right? Yeah. And, uh, and the value of the words coming from the margins that can teach us so much more about our world than what we see or think on an everyday basis. Yeah. It's the dryer. It's got rhythm. The rhythm of the dryer. Yeah, man. <laughs> Why, hello there, my thoughtful child. Why do you live your life so reckless and wild? I can see past your exterior. You are full of dread because, in a matter of years, Nothing will matter. You will be dead. But why the fear? Why the strife? Do not waste your time, child. Live your life. Thoughts of futility, discard them from your head. Because once you are gone, the ideas scatter. Nothing will matter. You will be dead. Mm. All right, so who is that? Who is that by? Daniel Farias and... Uh, I think it's an awesome poem. I liked it because uh, here you have a young man and he's projecting past, present, and future. Um, and I think it shows a young man who's quite aware of the fact that he's going through transitions in life. That's pretty awesome. You can reflect like that, man. So he's writing as a young man and he clearly understands uh, the strife 
of youth, and at the same time takes the position of an old man, strong. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, that kind of existential knowledge right. for a teenager that, like, yes, your time here is limited, you're right. going to die, Right. is, I mean, in one sense... Do you think there was a cry out for the immediacy of life? Exactly, yeah. because, you know, I'm thinking, like, a lot of the people I grew up with, um, we never thought we'd live past 25. <laughs> and then you get to 25, it's like, what the hell do I do now? <laughs> and... and, and that's kind of like what the poem is saying, because, you know, you can live your life up until that point where there's a lot of foolishness, but then, hey, man, life is going to go on, and you got to change. you got some responsibilities now. You have to figure so, out right what you're going to do. Right, and he sees that. Yeah. He sees that in that poem, man. So that that is very cool. It's going through all these changes and struggles trying to survive, and then you do. And then you get to this point sometimes of survivor's guilt. Like, what do you do now? Exactly. And everybody else is dead. All my homeboys are dead. What the yeah. hell? What do I do now? Right? You gotta go and that's on. sometimes a harder thing, I think, is to, ch to choose, in light of all the tragedy of the past, to continue choosing life. Correct. In, in, in light of all the, the knowledge of death and all the things surrounding you, like just to be like, fuck it, I'm going to keep going forward. Sometimes well, I doesn't it suggest to you that for a kid to be thinking on this level... That he's already almost at an old man's mentality. Right, because that you he, grow up fast under certain that conditions. That he's, at, yeah. he, he's at an age yeah. when he should only be thinking about about moving forward and about about living well, and about like the next battle and, stuff. and blah yeah. blah blah. But, but now he's actually contemplating like the philosophical reasons of of, of the choices that he made and, and, and is that, he worthy of living. And, and that kid is going to make a big difference in the world, right. I think, because to have that knowledge at a young age, not to be like, hey, what can I. But, well, how, how many but, pleasures but, but, can no, I have on myself? That, but like, like, more what, like, what what difference is that? That's wh that's where again it comes back to. What difference is that kid gonna make to the world if nobody knows that kid even exists? Well, that's the larger know. question. Now they will be. Daniel, yeah, they're gonna know you, man. So. Good point. I mean, think about it. Who, <laughs> yeah. who are the people? Who are the people that we allow to become our, the, you know, to become our spokesman for for all of us? Well, that's the foundation of audio writers. They show this alternative. Yeah, they show the beauty that's available. Yeah, and it's not it's necessarily story. from traditional institutional sources. Right. It's from this like this little book that not right. a lot of people have. Very hopeful. Very hopeful and very beautiful and very uh, determined, I think. Determined. How can people get yeah. this book? Uh, visit El Centro Cultural in Santa Ana. Well, it says there's a website, barriorwriters.org, and also a blog, barriorwriters.blogspot.com. These poems are so good that they did inspire us to start talking about it and reciting them. And I think I'm really hopeful that we go back to the source and have the authors come forth and maybe do a video with them and about them. And that would really be cool. Yeah. So to all the authors who put into this, gracias. Thank you. We want you here. Yeah. <laughs>
You heard it here. You got it. Book talk. Barrio cool. writers. Check it out. Orale.